Uh, um, what is your reaction to that kind of thing? I was horrified. I think it's wonderful. I was. I think he thought he was giving him a compliment. Right. Right. I think he removed black from this. Uh, he said side. for an hour. He said for an hour. That means after that speech, he had black again. I digressed. Huh? Yeah. I digressed for an hour. Yes. Oh, I was just caught up with him, and you forgot he was black. But hey, he really is black, and he's. Yeah. And he did come back on Rachel. Yeah. And yes, it. and he <laughs> dug his hole <laughs> deeper. Uh, I don't support that at all. And actually, I'm not a big fan of this new phrasing about it, a post-racial political era and all this sort of thing. Um, I don't subscribe to that thinking. Uh, I don't think progress is about us becoming colorblind. I think progress is about us being inclusive, you know, and valuing instead of tolerating, you know, different viewpoints. You know, sometimes the thing we are most intolerant of is the diversity of perspective and opinion and thought. And so the power of um, having diversity uh, in government um, is the power of inclusion and to enable us to work to achieve the solutions that are best informed. So I'm not a believer of this post-racial color blind. I don't think that's, if that's the direction we're moving in, I think that is uh, regressing. That is not progress. This is about each and every one of us, you know, whatever your gender, orientation, culture, ethnicity, uh, having that viewpoint affirmed, validated, and included in the discourse and in our policies and legislation. So. And I'm wondering, Ayana, if because there's a black president, there's a black uh, governor, there's a black mayor of Weston, um, if so you I get those two. <laughs> <laughs> same thing. Though. Um, do you feel differently about African Heritage American Heritage Month um, because there have been those triumphs, those victories? Um, is it, do we still need to do this uh, now that we've got a president of the United States? Do we, do we still have to look back on our history and mm. think about it? And yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that I don't, I don't just uh, take pride in being a black woman uh, during Black History Month. Mm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I also uh, try uh, to not only celebrate um, those who have come before me and are still doing this work only during Black History Month. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that these are important milestones and benchmarks. I think the challenge, you know, if I might say, as someone who is considered a trailblazer, is not to reduce any of these victories to mere symbolism. Um, I think that is very dangerous. And I see some of that happening, uh, I think, with Dr. King's uh, legacy, legacy and the handling of it. Uh, and it's really important um, that we challenge ourselves to you know, recognize those milestones and those achievements. Um, but there needs to be, I think, particularly when we're talking about elected representation, um, a strategic and substantive agenda uh, behind that. So you know, I don't have any problem being a pioneer. Um, but I think it's more important to create a legacy. And for me, I want that legacy to be um, developed based upon the good work that I'm going to do. So. One more question, because I want the audience to get a okay. chance, and I know you have to go. Um, do you aspire to higher office? Would you run for mayor of Boston? Would you <laughs> run for Congress? Or, uh... You know, um, what I would say about that is, uh, I think that Obama being president um, is why I think I get asked that question a lot because um, we have seen the highest heights reached and achieved. And so uh, everyone thinks sort of um, once you get in, you're immediately uh, calculating your ascension. Um, you know, I've not done this for my own personal advantage or resume building. You know, I sought to attain political power so that I could advance an agenda. 
and empower those that I believe um, don't have that power and don't have a voice. Um, ambition has its place. She said you were dancing one question. But yes, you are. Listen, ambition has its place. Listen, listen, listen. <laughs> Seriously, ambition has, but I do think this is true, but let's make a couple things. Ambition has its place. I don't currently aspire to do anything but to do this job well. And I really resent elected officials that compromise the confidence of voters by pretending they want a job they don't really want. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not interested in um, calculatedly using this as any stepping stone uh, to achieve higher office. So ambition does have its place. I've been in office five minutes, and I just want to concentrate on doing that job well. The other um, challenge, I think, with that is that if you're always looking ahead and you're not focused on the job that you're in, I think it can undermine the power and the value of that office. And I want you to recognize the power and the weight of local <laughs> representation. You know, what happens on the municipal level. So if I get in and all I'm thinking about is, you know, how high I can go, then you'll say, what's the power of that office? Everyone that gets in it wants to go someplace else. <laughs> you know, this is the form of government closest to community is the most important, and that's why I ran for this position. So never say never. Because I also said I'd never run for office, okay? <laughs> but I got dragged, kicking and screaming into it. Um, so never say never, but right now, you know, the only thing I aspire to do is to make my mama proud, uh, to represent you all well, to serve you well, to do this job uh, well. She's a good talker. <laughs>